Welcome to another episode of The Art of Giving a Damn. Today's guest is Rosie Aiello, and I guarantee you have never heard a story like hers before. Rosie, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Oh, I am excited to be with you, Michelle. You know, normally I start with a few questions and lead into, so why do you do what you do? But one of the things you put in the questions that I asked before I went live really grabbed my attention. You wrote, uh, and let me find the exact quote here. I didn't choose this work, God lassoed me. And that just really struck me. Um, you have such a unique story. Do you wanna just kind of start there with what's been your journey to what you do now? My daughter, yeah, I'd love to. Because my daughter and I, I, I lived in the Middle East for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. Let me start there. So I lived in the Middle East for 25 years. I'm originally from, from California. I'm originally from California. I worked in Silicon Valley in, in finance before I went over to the Middle East where I married um, a Lebanese man. I was married to a, a Christian Lebanese man. We lived in Saudi Arabia about 12 years and Lebanon about 12 years. And I really, truly from almost the get go, um, it was an abusive relationship, but I didn't know that. I, in fact, I didn't know it for 18 years that I was in an abusive relationship because, and it, because it was, it was, it was more verbal and psychological. It, you know, he wasn't, you know, giving me black eyes. He wasn't coming home drunk. I mean, there was nothing beating me up. I, I just, so it's, it was so subtle and so insidious. I just thought, you know, I was in Silicon Valley. I was a good student. You know, I, well, I'll be a better wife and I can do this. You know, it's all that kind of an attitude that I can be better. And then um, it just got worse as the years passed. And then as my daughter got older, he was being, treating her with the same way, putting her down, insulting her. And when she was 16, I kind of took her to the side. I said, when, you know, whenever you're ready to leave, just let me know. Mm -hmm. um, in the Middle East, this is really an important point. You know, lot, lots of women who get stuck in situations like, why did you stay so long? Which is a question I hope to answer mm -hmm. in my book. But one of the reasons I had to stay longer is that in the Middle East, custody automatically goes to the father until they oh, turn wow. major. So I was never going to leave without my daughter. So I made sure I waited until she was at least 18. And then I just gave her when, you know, she was going to college, she was happy there. But then it came to a point in time, she said, mom, get me out of here. Mm -hmm. She was a junior, almost you know, have show one year left. And eight years ago, um, I planned within four months, the escape of our lives wow. and landed in San Francisco international airport. And now creating our freedom and getting over, you know, our trauma, mm -hmm. you know, she has complex PTSD, I have PTSD, depression, anxiety, you name it, you know, we've had it or having it, you know, it's a process. Absolutely. It's, it's something that I know to people who have never been in the situation or don't know anyone who has, it sounds so crazy to hear somebody say, I didn't realize what kind of relationship I was in, but it really is something that you hear from a lot of people they just didn't realize what was going on because it is it's kind of sneaky in a way you don't you don't always connect those dots you think it's something you can do better um or you could change i know one of the things that you mentioned was you felt like you were alone at the time and i know that's part of why you do now what you do so can you speak to that for a minute how what you went through really relates to what so many women are are dealing with in their lives yeah absolutely i mean not most women who are in these situations get get isolated by their by their partner but on top of that i just felt so alone i mean and there was just i was just surrounded by shame you know i was just like it's like you it's like how did you know, you start challenging yourself you know mm -hmm. how did i get into this and and I, and the shame just kept me almost a prisoner. You know, I felt I was a prisoner, but I made myself a prisoner by not reaching out, by thinking I was all alone, by thinking that no one would understand. These are all just thoughts that, that, that weren't true because I'd never been in it. I just didn't understand. It's like, you just, it's stupid shame. 
you know, I, in fact, I just wrote a blog on it. It was just stupid, stupid shame and fear of judgment of people, yeah. which is the worst thing. I mean, if anything, reach out, reach out. You're not alone. I think we all have those things, whether it's a relationship we've been trapped in or something that we feel like we got hustled or swindled about or something that we fell for or that we just made a bad decision because of, you know, the, the knowledge we had at the time. We can be so embarrassed of it and feel so much guilt and shame over it that we're afraid to say anything when really everybody, I think, has those things that they feel that shame about. And if more of us would share our story, it really helps free other people to realize, okay, yeah, we all have these things in our life that we've gone through that we're embarrassed about, but it's one of the things we have in common. Um, and it's, it is so important to share those things so that other people realize they aren't alone because it can feel so lonely when you're going through that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the things that I know you speak about is the fact that for so many women who go through situations like that, where they're in emotionally abusive relationships, they, they lose their sense of self-worth and they're afraid to ask for things, to go after what they want. So what advice do you give women who, whether it's just by virtue of the way they were raised, this is a woman's place, or by virtue of relationships that they've been through, find themselves kind of in that, I'm afraid to ask for things because whether it's personal or whether it's business, you have to be able to stand up for yourself and ask for what you need and want. Um, where do you start to help support somebody with that? You know, the, one of the first, there's, there's quite a few, you know, parts to that. But one of the, one of the things I want to share is to help them believe that at first they deserve it. You know, it's this whole thing of deserving when you've been beaten down, you know, you've been insulted and humiliated and treated like a child and all these things. And, and you're told you're stupid. And so all these things going on top of you, you feel like you don't even, you don't deserve anything. What you, I, mean, I can, I can ask for something. I, you mean, it's okay. And I deal with women all the time with this. So, you know, it's really important to say, hey, you know, to claim it, to claim that I deserve it and to really know what your values are. This is a, a it takes work, you know, it takes somebody to work with really to really figure out well, what's important to me. That's what values are. It's just what's yeah. important to me. Right. And that, oh, I can ask for that. I can, and I help people by just saying, start practicing your smaller asks instead of a big ask. Like, okay. you know, ask Ask your partner, you know, um, gee, can you set the table or something that you know would be like an almost easy yes, but for okay. you it would be a difficult thing. Yeah. It's like do a little bit of a stretch before you ask for a bigger one and to feel um, that they want to help you too. That, that's huge because I think for so many of us, we forget the people around us actually do want to support us. Sometimes they don't know how if we don't ask. Yeah, we can't assume. We, we think they should know what we want. This is this is such a huge mistake. I mean, women think, yeah. oh, men should know, and probably vice right. versa. But, you know, they don't know. We're not, no one's a mind reader. And we have to get over, oh, well, he should know what I want. He should know what I like. And, you know, the men that I've been with, God bless them, they go, just tell me, you know, like, just, just tell me. And yeah. it was really hard, you know, as I came out of the shell, it's like, really? You know, I can just tell you? Yeah, please. And then, and then as I started practicing that, and he didn't yell at me, didn't get mad at me, he didn't trash me, it's like, oh, this stuff really works. <laughs> <laughs> it's great when something works like that, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, and and it, it is so true that it's hard, even the small things sometimes, to ask if you've been in that place where, where you've been and trying to find the courage, even when the chances are 99.9%, .9 the other person's going to say yes and be happy to do it. Yeah, I had a, I had a client and um, she, wanted, um, she wanted to ask her husband for a date night. But she says, oh, I, and I'm so afraid he, he works so hard. And, and so I gave her a strategy of what to do. Mm -hmm. And she wrote back to me, she goes, he said yes. And we're going out. I mean, he was thrilled. 
that she wanted to spend private time with him. You know, they had a little baby, so they didn't have too much private time. But she was afraid if she'd not come to me, she would have like still been worrying about what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, and our minds tend to go crazy when we start right. worrying about, about what the other person is thinking. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So is this something that you see as kind of a common theme for women that, that most of them struggle with, the idea of asking for help? I do. I do. And, and it, whether they've had, you know, uh, a background in, um, you know, some traumatic background in abuse or not, it just seems to be a chronic issue that women don't. And that's part of having the confidence, too. They all go hand in hand. And it goes in hand in hand with the deserving, mm. right? They're all sort of intertwined. But how much mm. more beautiful your life can be how much more fulfilling can your life be when you are the leader like what you profess and what you teach too is creating your life creating that limitless life creating this this life of you know hey i'm in charge here and i can do it gracefully and with kindness i'm not bulldozing my thoughts there's a right way to do it there is. That's a great point because I think so many of us have been raised with this idea that nice girls don't do certain things and that, you know, if we want people to respect us and treat us like a lady, we can't ask for things. We can't be pushy about things. And there's a difference between being pushy and, and not nice and asking nicely for things that uh, that you do deserve or that you, you there's no reason not to ask for. So how do you how do you teach people to ask in a way that does still stay in that, you know, I'm a nice human being type feeling? Because I think a lot of us struggle with that fear of, I don't want to be perceived a certain way. Well, what I usually, you know, guide people to do is, you know, first give the person a sincere compliment. Don't, mm -hmm. don't start off with some, you know, something perfunctory. Just make it very sincere mm -hmm. and kind of tied to what you're going to be doing. And then just say, start with the word curious, as opposed to, I have something to ask, I have, I have, to, I have to talk to you, you know, which men hate, you know. That's not a good phrase. Right, we need to talk. talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I need to have something. So, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. You know, have you, uh, like this, this woman, you know, I was just like, I'm curious, you know, I, I love, like the compliment, I love spending time with you. I love being with you. And I know you're so busy, but I'm just curious. I would really like to have like a, a, a night out alone with you. Is that something you could, you'd be willing to do? And then you get their agreement, you know, and then you thank them for that. And then when they deliver on it, like whatever it is, it could be instantaneous or, or whatever. Then you, you, you just, you thank them a lot when they deliver. And then you just give them all that positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine that young couple how much better it's like if they keep practicing that it's like yeah honey you know what i would really love is a candlelit dinner that you make for me when i come home from work do you think she's going to do that she's going to go oh my god i would love that <laughs> right because it's bringing them closer together um, so start with a compliment a sincere compliment say you're curious say in clear terms don't be wishy-washy it's got to wow. be clear you know, if it's yeah. not clear, you know, I would like a date night out with you. I would, you know, like to go shopping with you. Shopping. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, I would like to talk to you on the phone. This mm -hmm. is what was my partner. You know, I was more email and text because, you know, I'm in between. But he was like, none of that. He goes, I need to talk to you. Okay. And then after it was communicated, it was like, we talk all the time. Mm -hmm. That's such a great way to, to ask that doesn't feel like, I mean, that's not pushy at all to approach somebody that way. So I love that. And, you know, the flip side of asking for things is really learning how to set boundaries. Yes. And that's another thing that I know so many women struggle with. And it's, it's interesting because these issues come up in our personal lives, but when you go into business, it's like everything gets magnified because suddenly there's all these things that you are, you know, you've got to say no to, you've got to draw boundaries so you stay sane. And these things you need to ask for if you want to move forward in your business. So um, how do you address boundaries with people and, and how to set those for yourself? Boundaries are, are one of the top 
things that are really, really important for, for everybody and for women, I think, especially, especially you're hearing things in the media. Um, yeah. And a, bound, a boundary, if, to, to reframe the word boundary, because mm -hmm. boundary sounds like you're, you're putting a wall around you, mm -hmm. but truly a boundary is just telling people how you want to be treated mm -hmm. and you are in charge. So, but you are always in charge and this is the key. You're in charge. So if you are working, let's say you're writing your blog. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, this is your time to work, right? You, and the phone rings or text message comes in. Now you have to make, and you have split seconds to figure this out, but you have to make the decision. I am in this focused m mode right now. Mm -hmm. If I pick up the phone, I'm going to lose the focus or the text or our ice bond. Uh, and then maybe I lose my train of thought and I, gosh, I, then I can't get it back. It, that moment, you know what I mean? When you're in the flow, you're in the flow. Now, you may decide, oh, I see who's calling me. I've been trying to get a hold of them. You're, you're, and you're kind of balancing, geez, you know, gosh, I, have, I, need, I need to talk to that person who's been bouncing back and forth. You decide to pick it up. But it's an active decision. This is just mm -hmm. an example of one. Mm -hmm. So boundaries are just like, again, tied to your values, what's important to you at the time. And when it comes to like the women in the ask, what happens when you keep giving, you know, you're not asking, so you're giving when you don't want to, you want to receive. When you're giving and giving, what happens? You feel crappy. Yeah, totally drained. Totally drained. You feel taken advantage of, although it's your fault. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> right? You know, I, I, I know people are like, what do you mean it's my fault? You know, well, because you couldn't say no, right? Yeah. Or yeah. And, But again, it's, it's, we're responsible. And I tell you, it takes work. I mean, I've been working on this stuff like crazy, you know? Oh, I can only imagine. And that, that's actually really inspiring to me to know that, you know, based on your history and where you came from, you're able to turn that into, you know, being assertive and not just solving these problems for yourself, but helping other people solve them too. That's amazing. Because if you can do that, anybody can do that. <laughs> Thank you. You know, let me tell you, Michelle, you know, I, we escape for our freedom. And it's like, give a damn, talk about, I, I'm going to have my freedom, you know. <laughs> no one's going to take my freedom away, but I'm responsible for it. So I work at my freedom all the time. I'm responsible for my freedom. You know, there's not a day that goes by. I don't look out my window, see those palm trees. I'm in San Diego now, and just thank God for my freedom. And wondering what what else can I do to make sure I maintain my freedom? You know, working on my boundaries, working on my values, learning how to ask. And we all go in, you know, in ways. It's not always perfect, but to be conscious of it, to know you can ask, to know you can set a boundary with kindness. It's about being kind to yourself, but when you are, you'll be kind to others. Because it's just, you're just saying the rules. So you can live a full life, a fully expressed life. Love that. Well, I know you've got a, an ebook that walks people through how to actually ask for what you want. Um, so guys, if you are watching this right now or listening to the audio, make sure you take a minute and go to 11, that's the number one one, hourstofreedom.com forward slash gift, and you'll find 11 steps to confidently ask for what you want. I love that title, by the way, because there's there's something to not just asking, but being able to be confident when you do ask for things. Yeah, you know, and the 11 is just from our from the name of our memoir that mm -hmm. we're writing, 11 Hours to Freedom. The whole, yeah, program, the whole program designed about around that. Right, which is, I would love to talk about that for a minute. I know you're working on your book and you've got some really big plans for getting this message out there of finding your freedom again and, and how you did that for yourself and your daughter. So share with me a little bit about that. <laughs> yeah, well, first we have the, um, uh, a Facebook group. It's a mm -hmm. Facebook group called uh, The Love is Kind Movement. Okay. And um, just briefly, I, I named it that, Michelle, because I didn't want to just keep focusing on abuse. You know, I learned from Mother Teresa. She said, if you invite me to an anti-war rally, I won't come. But if you invite me to a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. And that's just it. It's not like we're not going to be talking about it, but what do I want? 
Right. What do we want to put our energy on? So the love is kind movement. I would love people to join there, share their story, share the movement. We want like a, you know, a hundred thousand or more people talking about this, talking about the book that's going to help millions of people. And my other mission for my, my daughter and I, we were on a global mission to save a million women and their children from domestic violence. So they can reclaim their voice. They can get the confidence. They can be good role models for their children. I mean, it's, it will be a win, win, win for the world when we have a kind family, a kinder community, and a kinder world. Absolutely. You know, I think we've all seen in the news everything that's going on right now. And one of the things that was saddening and yet at the same time empowering about the Me Too thing was nobody was surprised by how many women kind of raised their hand and said, yeah, I, I've been there. I know what this feels like. But at the same time, to realize what's going on and have that awareness of, okay, you aren't alone. And this is something we as a society need to stand up and change. And I think it's really related to what you're working on because it is an issue of being able to draw those boundaries for yourself and say, this isn't okay. I deserve to be treated different. Yes. And that can be so hard when you think what you're in is normal or okay. And you don't right. have those voices around you, you know, for... For people who haven't been in that situation before, what's something that they can do? Or they can join the Facebook group, Love is Kind. So if they just go to Facebook, search Love is Kind, that'll come up. The Love is Kind movement. Love is Kind movement. Yeah, movement. Okay. We're on a global mm -hmm. movement. Yeah, think mm -hmm. about that. What are some things that, that people can do to be there for the people around them? Because so often, I don't think people realize what people close to them are actually going through. Yeah. You know, it's the important thing is just, you know, ask them, you know, really like, hey, I, I, I kind of asked you kind of sad today or you're, you, you've been having a pattern of sadness is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here to listen. Is, is, is everything okay? And one of the important things is not to judge people. Like if they, if they open up to you and they say, oh, he's been beating me and he's just, you know, you know, yelling at the kids or, or whatever it is, um, these women because you know are really afraid and it, i felt like i had cement shoes on so don't you know the person should not say oh well, you need to get out they know they need to get out right now they just need you to hold them and give them space breathe and that and that and really that's it don't do any more and just say if you need help if you want me to do anything i'm there for you that kind of thing if you want me to make a phone call for you if you want me to do research for you whatever you want whenever you want i'm there for you because and some women are not ready to leave some women because this is one of the things that we i want to do is create a foundation to raise money mm -hmm. to help these women because they'll say oh yeah i want to you know yeah everyone tells me to leave but how am i going to survive these are real issues how am i going to pay the bills how are my children how am i going to feed my children these are so it's like the yeah i can be safe and be beat up you know have this torture or I can take a huge risk and maybe be on the streets. They don't know. But together, you know, my passion is just to really help these women and just hold them. Hold them where they're at. And it makes such a difference just knowing there's somebody there that when you're ready, you can reach out and that they'll be there to help you. Yeah. Because I think so often the worst part um, for women is feeling like they're alone, that they don't have a way out. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because one of the things that matters so much to me about what I do is that when women have their own businesses and have something they can do from home, then they have that way to support themselves and to escape situations like that. Um, and there's been so many times over the years that people have come to me and said, you know, it was because of a business that I was able to finally get out and yeah. do what I wanted to do with my life. And it's so many different ways that we can empower women, but it really does all start by saying, I'm here for whatever you need. I'm here to support you. Yeah, and it gets back to the whole thing from the beginning about being alone, that you're not alone. And again, and for them to recognize that they don't need to be treated that way, yeah. that they deserve a better life. They deserve a joyful life. They deserve a prosperous life. They deserve it. Um, because love, you know, I have a couple hashtags. One is love is kind, not terrorizing. Mm -hmm. 
And the other one is, I believe her because well, oftentimes it's just his word against her word. And um, I want to just give that my support that I believe you. I believe you and I'm there to support you wherever you are. It's such an important message to get out there. And if there's anybody listening to this or, or watching it who you're in a situation like that, just know there are people here that will help you when you need it. I encourage everybody, whether you've been in that situation or you're in that situation or, or you're not, and maybe you don't know anyone who has, go join the Love is Kind Movement Facebook group so that you can help us be part of changing these kinds of things in society because anything can be changed if we set our minds to it. Uh, I really believe that. And I love the mission that you've got, Rosie, and that you're willing to share that story despite anybody else's judgment or what somebody else might say because when we're willing to share our stories and let people know what we've been through, that we've come out the other side, it gives people hope. And that makes such a difference. So thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's been an honor to be with you and to yes. share with your community, truly. I'm glad that you found that courage to be able to say, you know, I'm going to choose a different life for myself. And my yeah. So guys, again, the Facebook group is Love is Kind Movement. And also make sure you go to 11hourstofreedom.com forward slash gift and grab that guide. It'll help you ask for things a little more confidently in your business, in your life, uh, and be able to stand up and be more empowered about who you are, what you're here to do, and what you deserve in this life. So again, 11hourstofreedom.com forward slash gift. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I got the URL right. <laughs> and thank you again for joining us for the podcast today, Rosie. I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, Michelle. You've been awesome. All right, guys. Uh, make sure that you subscribe wherever you are watching or listening to this and tune in for the next episode. I will see you then.